Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I'm here with Dyer Supplier to demonstrate how to make a stock solution with Jacquard acid dyes. When we are referring to stock solution concentrations in the indie dyer world, we usually refer to these as a percent. So a 1% stock solution would be one gram of dye dissolved in 100 milliliters of solution. There are many different reasons why stock solutions can be beneficial. One of them is that your dyes are in solution and aren't dry anymore. Uh, whenever you are dealing with dry acid dye powder, you need to take some additional safety precautions. I like to wear a respirator or a dust mask, safety goggles, and gloves. Now, anytime you're dyeing with commercial acid dyes, you should wear gloves and make sure all of your tools and equipment are dedicated for dye, not used for food. But not having to deal with the powdered dye removes an additional element that a lot of people may not love. And so by mixing stock solutions, it means I'm spending less time overall wearing the respirator. Another big reason why people like to use stock solutions is for consistency. I personally find it a lot easier to measure out 100 milliliters than it is for me to measure out one gram of dye. Now let's go put on my respirator glasses gloves and go make a 1% stock solution. To make a 500 milliliter 1% stock solution, first you want to make sure that you have 5 grams of dye. And then we will dissolve it in water and bring the total volume up to 500 milliliters. You don't want to just dump uh, your 5 grams of dye into 500 milliliters of water. It will be really hard to mix it up. So instead, what we're going to do is add a tiny amount of water to our dye and start pasting it up, which is getting all of this powder wet here in the cup. I added just, I mean, about a tablespoon of water, and I am trying to make sure that it is nice and wet because then as we add more and more water, it'll be a lot easier to mix up. One other thing that will help make things a bit easier is to use warm water. So I'm using hot tap water here instead of, say, uh, using cool or cool tap water. Now that all the powder is wet, I no longer need my respirator. Uh, some colors can be more stubborn than others when it comes to stirring. And eventually, you will want to move, or at least even weigh directly into a container that has some graduated markings on it so you can measure the volume. Um, and so here I've got a 500 milliliter beaker. And by transferring the water into another container, you can get a sense of how dissolved or not it is. And so then you can add more water, transfer it to the cup, and repeat. And now we've got most of the dye out of the original container we weighed into. Um, another way that you can mix is by pouring the color back and forth. And you can see that we're not even at our desired volume yet, but we are already pretty well dissolved. You're not seeing a lot of like particles or solids left behind as we are pouring it. Then I like to just slowly add more and more water to the original container, transfer it into the big one, trying to make sure um, I stir a lot and dissolve as much powder as I can. And so you'll keep adding water until you bring the total volume up to your desired volume, which in our case is 500 milliliters. We now have five grams of the Jacquard gunmetal dye dissolved in 500 milliliters of water, which is a 1% stock solution. I have a 500 milliliter storage bottle, and using a funnel or by doing a very, very careful pour, you can transfer your dye into the storage container. I like to use either plastic squeeze bottles or sometimes I will use glass uh, canning jars to store my dye stocks. If your stock is well mixed, you will see nothing except for droplets left in the container. Otherwise, you might see um, some granules of something. Now, you could also start pouring into the container before you're at the total volume, but my bottles don't have uh, volume markings on it, so I like to measure in an external container before I pour. 
finally, you want to label your bottle with the color name and the date that you mixed it. So that way you can have a sense of how fresh the stock is and know the concentration. Some colors are a lot easier to dissolve than others. For example, Jacquard Sun Yellow dissolves nicely into warm water. However, as that cools, it sort of solidifies and the dye will crash back out of solution. And so that's one color that whenever I wanna use it, I will mix it up fresh versus making a dye stock of it. I really hope that you found this tutorial helpful and it can make you feel more confident as you go and make stock solutions for the first time to start playing with some acid dyes. There is a reason why dye stocks are usually referred to in terms of the percent, the grams of dye per volume of water. And that is because it is more accurate to measure out your grams of dye than it is to measure out a volume, say a teaspoon or a tablespoon of that dye. And that is because the volume of dye can vary between different colors, but it also could be, the powder could be fluffier, it could be more compact. And so if you're measuring the weight, you will get more consistent amounts of color each time. Ultimately, the level of consistency really depends on what you're going for with your projects. So ultimately, you need to have fun and play with color but making dye stocks is a great way to improve your reproducibility uh, with your projects. Dye stocks can last for a while. I have some that are months old that I can get beautiful, great color from. However, I have found that sometimes some dyes might crash out of solution over time, which settles to the bottom and can lead to you getting less consistent results. Therefore, if the project is really important, I like to mix up the dye stocks fresh. But if I'm going to play with color mixing or I'm less worried about the reproducibility of my results, then I love to have some old dye stocks on hand so that way I have the colors already mixed and ready to go and play. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and if you would like to watch me dye some more yarn, you can find me on the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. There will be a link in the video description. And as you're getting set up to create beautiful colors on yarn, head over to Dyer Supplier, where you can find many beautiful, ethically sourced, affordable yarn bases that come in a variety of fiber contents and yarn weights. Dyer Supplier also carries all 40 Jacquard Acid Dye colors, so you can get everything you need to get started. Thank you so much for watching.